Okay, so we've talked a lot about osmolality. Um, we've talked about osmotic pressure. Um, there's also the term osmolo osmolality. And this is the amount or number of solute particles in one kilogram of, of water, or one liter of water. And it's a measure of those solutes ability to cause osmosis. So, uh, and we can measure the osmolality of body fluids in a term called milliosmols. The, the kidneys maintain osmolality at around 300 milliosmols using what's called the countercurrent mechanism. So, um, one of the critical functions of the kidney is to keep the solute load of body fluids constant by regulating urine concentration and, and volume. Uh, so let's step back a minute. So one of the critical functions of the kidney is to keep the solute load of body fluids constant by regulating urine concentration and volume. The countercurrent mechanism involves an interaction between filtrate flow rate through the loops of Henle in the juxtamedullary nephrons and the flow of blood through the vasa recta. The filtrate flow in the loop of Henle is called the countercurrent multiplier, and the blood flow in the vasa recta is the countercurrent exchanger. So, what this, the only thing you really need to know about the countercurrent mechanism is that it establishes an osmotic gradient from 300 milliosmoles to 1200 milliosmoles um, from the renal cortex through the renal medulla and it allows the kidneys to vary urine concentration. So here you see that as we descend from the cortex to the medulla we get increase, increasing amount of solutes so increasing, um, increasing osmolality in the interstitial fluid. Um, it's a very complex way that it's set up. Basically, um, water, uh, the descending loop of Henle is only permeable to water, and the Ascending loop of Henle is impermeable to water, but it actively pumps out salts. So the um, filtrate becomes increasingly concentrated as it flows down here, and it becomes increasingly uh, dilute as it flows up here. Uh, but what all this pumping out of water and pumping out of solute does is set up that gradient um, from 300 to 1200 deep in the inter deep in the medulla. The vasa recta. So those um, tissues still need blood flow, and the vasa recta delivers blood to the medullary tissues. Um, now, normal blood flow would just wash away that osmotic gradient. It would equalize the osmotic gradient with that of normal blood. The vasa recta flows very slowly, and it protects um, the medullary osmotic gradient by preventing rapid removal of salt and by removing uh, and by removing reabsorbed water. So basically, the vasa recta um, is has pretty much the same ends up having pretty much the same osmolality as the interstitial fluid in the um, interstitial fluid of the medulla. Uh, so it may, helps to maintain this osmotic gradient. So how do we form dilute urine now? Um, uh, remember, if, as we go up the um, 
ascending loop of Henle, filtrate gets diluted as sodium gets pumped out, and then in the absence of ADH, dilute filtrate just flows out of the collecting duct and into the renal pelvis <coughs> as dilute urine. Um, sodium and other ions may s be selectively removed in the um, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct and you can further pull more salts and even lower, even dilute the urine even more. Uh, so here we have water is reabsorbed in the descending limb so things get a little more increase in osmolality and then as we go up in the ascending limb salts are actively pumped out so we decrease in all osmolality and if nothing happens here we just would produce a large amount of dilute urine. Now when we form concentrated urine so if our body's dehydrated and we need to conserve water <coughs> The formation of concentration urine depends on that medullary osmotic gradient that we talked about before. So ADH triggers putting aquaporins or water channels in the collecting ducts. So it triggers the reabsorption of water in the collecting ducts. And um, when ADH is present, um, most of the water in filtrate gets reabsorbed. So you can see here, uh, ADH, this is with ADH present, water is uh, reabsorbed. And you can see <clears throat> as water is reabsorbed, the osmolality of the urine increases, but we have this nice gradient in the interstitial fluid here set up by the countercurrent exchange mechanisms that um, keep this interstitial fluid, uh, this gradient from low osmolality to very high osmolality as we pass through the medulla. So as the um, cortical collecting duct passes through the medulla, we get water can still diffuse out because there's still um, a high amount of solutes in interstitial fluid so it promotes water moving out. Urea is moved out as well by ADH um, and that further increases the uh, osmolality of the interstitial fluid promoting more water reabsorption. Okay, so diuretics you guys all know what diuretics, they're things that make you pee more. Um, osmotic diuretics are substances that are not reabsorbed, so they pull more, they basically um, pull more water from interstitial fluids. Um, ADH, uh, ADH inhibitors can be a diuretic, so alcohol, um, can be a diuretic if you drink a lot of alcohol it inhibits ADH production by the pituitary gland you get less water reabsorption and more urine production so you can get dehydrated pretty easily uh, with excess alcohol consumption okay um, and then also substances that um, inhibit the sodium reabsorption and water reabsorption in the tubules like caffeine and other drugs can be diuretics as well. Renal clearance is um, how much, given a volume of plasma, how much uh, substance is cleared given a particular time. And these tests are used to determine glomerular filtration rate and see if there's any glomerular damage and follow the progression of renal disease. And we talked about this before, but inulin 
inulin is one of those um, things that's used to measure glomerular filtration rate. I'm not going to talk a lot about the physical characteristics of urine. We're going to go over that more when we look at our uh, data from our lab exercise.